Welcome, friends. Last time on Flowering Elbow, we took apart a washing machine, salvaging the parts, cleaning them up so we could use them for our multi-purpose rotary machine. The table was made from scrap ply laminated together with the spider attached. An oaken underframe was made to clamp the bearings. The universal motor was mounted to create great motion at the platter. But now, friend, let us continue. Set the timer. Let's go for one minute. Start. Okay, here we go. This right here is the moment I decided I needed to make a green sand mulling machine. After pressure washing, the sheet metal is loads cleaner and it's going to make the sand bowl for the mulling machine. Just so that we're all on the same page here, and in case you're joining us fresh, a green sand muller is something that mixes and reconditions green sand. Green sand is a special mix of clay and sand with a certain moisture content. You use it to make moulds which you can pour molten metal, normally aluminium, into to make castings. While the multi-purpose machine I'm making here wants to be as versatile as possible, in this video we're focusing on the green sand mulling portion of things. Because it's going to be versatile, it needs to have really tight speed control. With an upcycled washing machine motor, this is possible but tricky. For this project, I wanted to make and understand a PID Arduino controlled speed system, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that over simpler triac based boards that I've made in the past. Either way, I'll go through those circuits and the closed loop circuit I used here in detail in a different video. Well, my circle cutting could have been a lot better, but I guess that's what you get from doing it in the dark. Uh, I'll just trim this a little bit in situ just to get rid of some of these sharp edges. The metal disc here is just stuck down with double sided tape and I'm figuring its purpose will be twofold. One, it'll stop the sand just wearing away the plywood really quickly and two, it will be a useful splatter shield for when I start using this rotary tool for welding. These two pieces that look a lot better now they've been painted are going to make up the side walls for the sand bucket. To convert the machine to other uses like welding, I'm going to need to make these sides removable so I'm spacing the screws out pretty much as widely as I think I can get away with. And it's a real shame I didn't just have one piece that would stretch the whole circumference. But then again, I guess I'm lucky to have these scraps of steel and it's a real pleasure just to make a machine like this almost entirely from reclaimed materials. Now I've overlapped this so that when it's spinning round, hopefully the sand won't catch in these little lips, but rather just slide off and we'll see how it goes. As this is coming together, I'm starting to get the feeling it's not going to be hugely removable in a convenient way. So I might well change this in the future. In fact, Crazy PJ suggested in the previous video that you could potentially use an old cut up truck tire as the sidewall. So this upright doesn't fit perfectly, but neither is it too bad because of the way the washing machine curves around, we're just going to kind of bolt it on and hope for the best the moment. Truth. Where this bit oh, it looks like a perfect fit. Yes! Okay, that's great. So we're going to make a little notch for this kind of rivet thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we need to make a little notch for it. And then a few screws in there, and that'll be quite solid. Around here somewhere. After scrounging around for something to use for the crushing wheels for quite some time, I wasn't coming up with anything and I was just getting ready to cast some in concrete with a plastic kind of retaining lip made from an old barrel. That's when I spotted these cast iron babies outside taking a dirt bath. 
This one's rusted solid. Of course, I considered making them from cast aluminium, but it just didn't seem right considering I was making a green sand muller to help with that capability. Okay, well, quite by chance I found that just the plain bit of piping that I've got here actually fits really quite nicely into there. Well, nice enough for this application anyway. So we'll see what we can do with that. I'll bring it up temporarily with this clamp here. It seems to be working quite well. There's a little bit more creaking than I would like. Okay, Let's turn that off. I need to put the back back on to stiffen things up a little bit. And then the two plows that are gonna kind of shape where the sand goes. After raiding the scraps bin, I found this little bit of old gas bottle that's left over from making the experimental sideways burning wood stove. Now we want to round off all the corners and get rid of the burrs before we cut it back to bare metal ready for joining to these offcuts of bar stock here. This one I'm just cutting a diagonal angle in just to fit the plow blade in. I surprised myself a little bit here by remembering I would need to drill holes and that would be much easier before the plow blades were attached. For drilling operations I've started using this coconut oil as a kind of cutting oil. I'd be interested to hear if anyone else has any experience using coconut oil for any engineering kind of tasks. We had a big bottle that went rancid anyway so it just seemed like a good use. To fix these plow blades to their holders, I'm just presenting them at what seems like the right angle and then tack welding them in situ before then taking it off to the bench and properly welding there. So the way I'm proposing to solve that is by drilling a small hole in the pipe there. the height of the plows I'm just tightening them in place with a small scrap of wood under the blade and then when that's removed there's a nice consistent gap. I was getting a little impatient to try this out at this point and try as I might I couldn't get rid of a very small gap between the side walls and the base that sand would leak through so I just hot melt glued that making the side walls even less on and offable. Okay friends I think we're actually ready to give this a try. It's almost certainly not going to work on the first go but I'm very excited to find out how it's going to work. We'll fill it with green sand, turn it on, okay. see what happens and see some little bits that we're pushing out. In retrospect, it probably would have been better to have the machine running when emptying the sand in. So I just thought I'd push it around by hand for a bit to kind of see what was going to happen here. So as you can probably tell, this is just straight from a previous use. It's got little bits of aluminium in and is very dry. Here we go. Turn it on. Okay, set the speed on the start. And we're off, except we're not, because at that speed the motor just can't produce enough torque to really turn this thing round consistently. Even with the 16 to 1 pulley reduction, it's really struggling. And admittedly this is slower than it needs to go, I think probably we want the ball going about 50 RPM or so. Here it is at that kind of speed. 
So yeah, it runs okay at this speed. This did spark a whole lot of rejiggery with the speed drivetrain. Now added a whole new reduction pulley in and did quite a lot of tweaking to the tuning parameters of the PID. All of that I'll cover in a separate video. Noises. Let's have a look. Little side pieces. Okay, and that's it stopping. Let's talk about some of the other problems then. As soon as I put water in the mix, it causes it to stick to the wheel which isn't ideal and only one wheel seems to be turning so we solved this just by greasing up the wheels and then adding a layer of this slick plastic repair tape that worked well and cut down on the noise somewhat but the grease in combination with the fine sand made an excellent abrasive paste i rummaged through my drawer of old seals turned out this tight rubber boot that seems to seal the outside but for now the inside's still unsealed so it still needs some tweaking but for now this is actually working really quite well and i'm pretty pleased with it the sidewall still sounds like a hyperactive cockerel riding a old wheelbarrow or something and there's a few other tweaks that need to be made maybe you've got some suggestions for an easily removable side wall apart from that friends thanks so much for listening and watching as always consider subscribing if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>